Joining us now to discuss how magic happened on Saturday is the BYU women's volleyball coach, Heather Olmstead. Heather, up, welcome Heather? back. Guys. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. What a weekend. What would you do to celebrate on Saturday night? Oh, my gosh. I mean, the celebration on the court was probably something, obviously, I'll never forget, to be able to be at home with our team. Um, I mean, everybody was crying. It was just such a, a, a great celebration. And then afterwards in the locker room as well, I mean, that was probably the greatest celebration we did that night. Extra Powerade for everyone. I mean, I mean, did your <laughs> did your phone blow up? Did it take a while to go to sleep? It, it definitely took a while to go to sleep, but I mean, I'm not complaining. It was great. Yeah, well, explain your phone. What was your phone like when you finally got to address it? Uh, I just, you know, people saying congrats and wish, you know, telling us how well we played and excited for us and telling us they'll see us next week in Minnesota. So it was just really cool. Um, we appreciate all the support, all the family and friends, and we know a lot of people are behind the scenes helping us out, and so it means a lot. Let's talk about that crowd. Second largest crowd in program history, and you had had the, I think the top three or four largest crowds were yeah. this year in program history. What did it mean to pack the house, and then what influence did that crowd have on the match? Absolutely. Our fans just keep keep bringing the, you know, the crowds, and, and it's we, they keep outdoing themselves with record crowds after record crowds and this weekend was unbelievable to not only see our matches but the other matches that were played you know in the regionals and we just appreciate it the electricity in the in the gym just during the Texas match it just it gave the girls just that extra energy they needed to, to keep going and it was unbelievable we appreciate all the support from the community and the school sometimes it takes uh the crowd a second to warm up yeah. they were there from point one like it was it was right away yeah, I, th I thought that helped. They were pretty fired up, um, and they were excited. And they've been with us this whole season. It's, this is nothing new for them. They've been there on a Saturday at 1 p.m. against some West Coast Conference opponents. And we just we're so grateful to our fans and the community for supporting us through this run. There were a few times I had legitimate chills yeah. during the match. Just like, whoa, like overwhelmed by the volume, uh, the intensity. And your team responded. What gave you chills on Saturday night? Yeah, I think um, I actually got chills during the national anthem, just uh, standing there with the team and, and hearing the whole crowd sing the national anthem. And then uh, as the team gets announced, it always kind of gives me the, the chills. And I think um, multiple times when the crowd erupted, you can just feel how special it is and feel the magic. It was pretty cool. Let's talk about what your team did, because that was the most special thing, I think, was they responded so well. You trailed by multiple points in the middle towards the end, kind of 17, 14, a couple times. How did you make adjustments to, to turn it on in the 20s? Yeah, I was so impressed with our team's composure overall the whole weekend. I mean, even against Texas, we were getting stuffed off the court. I mean, obviously, that's 16 blocks. They were doing a great job with their blocking. We just looked at each other and said, let's stay in the present. Let's just focus on the next touch and chip away at the score and see what we can do. And then we'd get an ace, then we'd get a kill, then we'd get a stuff of our own, and then, you, you, you know, we're 17-17. So they were so composed, and after 20, man, they were solid. They were so solid. What was the overall – because I saw you, I saw the NCAA selection committee members talking with you and with Tom Homo and Brian Santiago. What was their message to you guys after the weekend? Yeah, just a uh, great weekend of volleyball and, and proud of our team for uh, overcoming a lot uh, this whole year and, and to being able to go into Minnesota this week and play in the Final Four. I mean, I think everybody's proud of what this team's done. It's, just, it's a really special group of young women. Ronnie Jones-Perry has 25 kills in three sets. That's just incredible. She's a beast. Um, what did she do this weekend that was – maybe it's not different. Maybe she's been doing it all year, but – but she kind of rose to that elite level, first team All American type level. You know, she's this been, season, yeah. she's been playing like that all all year. So yeah. we see that every day in practice. We see it in all the matches, home and away. She's so steady. She's so solid. She's improved her overall all around game. I just think how far she's come from her freshman, sophomore, junior, senior year. I, I just don't know if there's a better story out there for hard work and perseverance, determination, resiliency, grit. You name it, she's got it, and she wants it. She knows what she wants, and she's going to go get it. It's the Copper Hills way, Heather. <laughs> all right, that's how we do. At Copper Hills. <laughs> remind people. We're not Bingham, okay? For those who don't know, remind people how Ronnie even discovered BYU. How did she get to BYU? Yeah, we saw, we saw her play in club, and uh, we saw her arm, and we saw her, her jump. I mean, she was only touching 9-11 at the time that we were recruiting her, so almost 10 foot, which is pretty good in volleyball. Because she was mostly off the radar, right? Yep. And so her junior year, we, we identified some things in her that we liked. We got to know her family. Uh, they're an amazing family. Obviously, they did a good job raising her. She works hard. Her club coaches did a great job training her. And they said, hey, this, is, this girl's going to work hard for you. And so you should look at her. And, and we just decided after getting to know her, and obviously, again, we liked her arm, that if we could train her up and she would put in the work, that she could be pretty special.
Now she's touching 10.8. Yeah. <laughs> wow. An 11-inch 11, 11 increase? That's crazy. Jumping out yeah. of the gym. Um, is there a sense of validation given how good you guys have been, but now you turned this into something special and great this year, getting past the Sweet 16? I think we're just excited to keep this journey going. I, I think we're just doing it for ourselves, nobody else but just this team. We talk, obviously, all year in the offseason. And this this group of senior leadership, man, they're they're something special. They've been through a lot together. So to be able to cap it off with this, their senior year, I'm, I'm, I could not be more happy for this group. You obviously played and beat Stanford in late August in front of one of those record magical crowds in the Smithfield house. Now you get them in the final four on a neutral floor. How are they a different team, and how are you a different team this time around? Yeah, super excited to match up with Stanford again. They're a great team, a great coaching staff. Uh, they're, they're well prepared. They're, they're very similar, actually. Their personnel is the same, you know, unlike our team. So, uh, Obviously, they've gotten better um, statistically. Some numbers and things they're doing that they've improved over the course of the year, which you would expect. But so have we. So I think it's going to be a different match than the first match because I, I don't think any two matches are ever the same. But I, I think it's going to be a great matchup again with some great offense, great defense, and a really good serve pass game. How have you adjusted so effectively without McKenna Miller? Yeah, we absolutely love our team. And so I, everyone on our team's ready to fulfill a role. They're ready for their moment. We talk about that a lot. You need to be ready for your moment. And you saw one of those moments with Ke Keani Tuiletta serving that ace. And she's been training, you know, not only setting, but all year to have that moment. And that ace could not have come at more timely time in that third set. And I'm really happy for her. And so we're, we're excited to, to have our whole team. And, and everybody knows that they're going to get their moment. And you've seen some kids step in remarkably. Man, the young guns especially, Maddie Robinson, Heather Knighting have taken an increased role. What do you think about your freshmen? Absolutely. I mean, Heather Knighting is patrolling that front line. She's she's a, a big kid with a big block with a heavy arm, and so people have to respect her, and that's a big deal for us to have her out there. And then Maddie stepped in, and just she has no fear. She's fearless. She's out there having fun, getting more comfortable every day. You can just see it when you watch her play, and she was so composed. I mean, talk about composure mm. for some of those freshmen out there. I mean, it was just so cool to see the seniors celebrating and with those younger kids like, yeah, that's right. <laughs> We're doing this. Well, Maddie Robinson had a couple of swings where I was like, yeah. whoa. And like, she got blocked multiple times in a row. And then the third time, she gets a kill. And it's like, she just didn't care. Absolutely. I, I loved it. I love it. Okay, in 2014, when you guys went to the Final Four, uh, we got a piece of the uh, sport court. And we had a shot of that going to break. Is that a fair ask to get a piece of the sport court or better this weekend? <laughs> yeah, let's see. <laughs> Um, I guess, what if maybe a piece of like the actual trophy? National yeah, the trophy. trophy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, if that, 